Dear ChemCon family, welcome back to ChemConnection that provides you with regulatory news in between ChemCon conferences. I know many regulators and compliance driven companies are eager to meet live again in Asia to set and achieve compliance objectives for chemical control regulations and share experiences for a more sustainable, transparent and circular value chain. To whet your appetite for the upcoming conference we have several interesting topics in this ChemConnection. Peter Koritar from the European Commission DG Environment explains what the One Substance One Assessment initiative aims to achieve. Wim de Koen from the European Chemicals Agency addresses ECACHEM, the new public chemicals database. I discuss with Jeff Lee from Procter Gamble the key regulatory developments in the Asia Pacific region. And Tara Jacola from 3E shares key developments in the USA. And Patrick Wiskowski will outline ChemSec's investors initiative on hazardous chemicals. But, as promised, first Peter Koritar from the European Commission DG Environment. Peter, what is the one substance, one assessment package proposing? And what are the objectives the Commission tries to achieve? The package finalizes consolidation of the scientific and technical work on chemicals in the EU agencies, which has been ongoing since 2020 as part of individual proposals. So the package amends in this regard three remaining pieces of legislation to finalize this consolidation. The package further improves cooperation among the agencies. It gives obligation to the EU agencies to cooperate on data exchange, on methodologies and on opinion making. The proposal then establishes the common data platform on chemicals that is to be the one-stop shop for all data and information on chemicals held by the EU institutions, whether it is the Commission or the EU agencies. The package further establishes the monitoring and outlook framework on chemicals to shorten the regulatory response to potential risks. The proposal also allows ECHA to commission studies on chemicals to complement, where necessary, the existing data requirements. And finally, the package ensures transparency as regards the studies on chemicals performed by industry. It will require industry to notify the studies before they are performed. Thank you, Peter. Much more on the One Substance, One Assessment Initiative, the Chemical Strategy for Sustainability and other European regulatory developments from the European Commission will be discussed in depth during ChemCon Asia 2024. For One Substance, One Assessment, data is needed. In Helsinki, the European Chemicals Agency gathers and generates a lot of data on chemicals. Early 2024, the new public chemicals database, ECACHEM, was launched. Wim, can you tell us more about this? Uh, yes, we host one of the world's widest databases on chemicals and we make the data that we collect under legislations that we implement available for anyone to consult on our website. By the end of last January, we published a new system to make this data available. It's called ECACHEM. Here, we already publish information from the more than 100,000 REACH registrations. In the next phase, after summer, we will launch the revised classification and labeling inventory of chemicals on ECACEN, with information also on how authorities and companies classify substances on the EU market in a more user-friendly form. Later this year, we'll start moving also information on the regulatory activities that the European authorities are doing in relation to the chemicals, so, and also the obligations arising from these when it comes to marketing and using substances in the EU, for example, as a result of restrictions. Great to have all this information in one place. What's new compared to the old database? Um, as said, um, ECA makes industry submitted data available as well as information generated in the EU regulatory processes. So ECA can is the new solution to share this growing amount of information that we host. ECHA's current information on chemicals platform, launched in 2016, has grown rapidly and it contains information on over 360,000 chemicals. ECHA-CHEM allows us to better handle this growing diversity and quantity of data, also while taking advantage of the latest technological advancements. So, while building the system in a more stable and also flexible way, we're also paying attention to the user experience. And over the past years, we've been consulting our users 
um, on our services to get their views on features like navigation and ways to make information available. So we're also preparing through this way uh, ourselves to accommodate the needs that will be arising from new tasks that will be assigned to ECHA later. Thank you, Wim. Several of Wim's colleagues will attend and present in Bangkok. Among others, they will talk about the EU COP revision and the acceleration of regulatory actions for chemicals. With Wim, I also talked about the urgent research needs to push the boundaries of chemical safety assessment further and to bridge science and chemicals regulations. You can watch this video on our YouTube channel. Enough on Europe for now. Recently, I was in Beijing, where I would discuss with Jeff Lee of Procter Gamble what he considers are the key regulatory developments in the Asia-Pacific region. Among others, we talked about the upcoming K-REACH deadline in Korea. Yeah, indeed, actually, 2024 is another important milestone for completing the registration for all 100 to 1,000 ton chemicals in Korea, which keep the uh, industry quite busy. Right? And uh, furthermore, I would, uh, I would see that uh, by listening to the industry, Korea is making a lot of progress amending the regulation. They just uh, announced an uh, important change. So from January 1st, 2025, for the new substance, the registration threshold has already increased from original 100 kg to one ton. I think this is a very encouraging amendment, right? That would enable industry and also government to focus the efforts to those higher risk and higher priority chemicals. And also what I understand is that the uh, Korean government is also working on other amendments to, to ease the implementation of this regulation, including simpli uh, simplification of certain data submission of course, there is some, some concern, like for the free rider, we yet need to understand it better. And uh, there was also like additional exemption, like uh, substance in recycling waste. And also they, they, they changed the reporting conditions for the substance subject to intensive management. And there's other changes, like uh, the, the toxic substance category and the, the designation. More on Jeff's insights on regulatory developments in Southeast Asia, as well as key developments in China, in the complete interview I had with Jeff in Beijing. You can also watch this video on our YouTube channel. And of course, for real first-hand information, we are honored to bring an all-star regulator lineup to Chemcon Asia 2024 in Bangkok. Next to the Southeast Asian authorities, we expect various authorities from China, Korea and Japan. Since Chemcon Conferences is proud to update you on the regulatory developments around the globe, I asked Tara Jacola of 3E what the key developments in the USA are. As far as the key developments here in the US, certainly you're seeing a steeper hike in task fees for, for those in industry to be aware of. Uh, when we look at the EPA has recently identified um, over 900 chemicals in the latest TSCA inventory updates. And so as we look at that biannual publication of TSCA, uh, we now have, um, you know, about 86,000 chemicals that exist, uh, 42,000 uh, which are actually actually active in U.S. commerce. And so at the state level, you know, we have um, California certainly being active with the OHIA air toxics hotspots uh, draft guidelines. Those have recently, uh, you know, been delivered and a public hearing is, is set for conducting health risk assessments for isoprene, uh, which is already uh, an active California Proposition 65 ingredient. As far as HASCOM, still waiting on that. It is uh, still stuck within the OMB review. Uh, we are hope hoping for publication though soon this month. And you know that will certainly be something industry will want to keep a close eye on uh, to make sure that they're prepared from you know a safety data sheet authoring perspective and, and really ready for, for those uh, those new updates. Uh, as far as you know, on TOSCA 8A7, that is that one-time uh, PFAS requirement, uh, the reporting requirement that the EPA is going to be using in order to really, you know, use that data to better characterize the sources, quantities, as well as end uses of PFAS. And so all manufacturers and importers of PFAS since 2011, as well as end users of PFAS are going to be doing that, um, are going to be required to report 
The biggest differences uh, for this report is that importers of articles who are you know, discrete manufactured goods are also subject to that report. Uh, so there will be a lot of companies that are required to report that may have never had to deal with Tosca before. Um, so that's also including small businesses um, as well as those importing articles. Uh, so you know, something to certainly keep an eye on. I also discussed with Terra upcoming PFAS regulations in several states, as well as the proposed currently unavoidable use definition, the American equivalent of essential use. Next to our focus on regulatory developments related to chemical control legislation, ChemCon Asia 2024 has a strong focus on sustainability. And therefore, in Bangkok we organize something new. Our Inspire Investment in Sustainable Growth Forum. This forum aims to connect and inspire investors, industry experts and regulators by sharing and exploring implementation and investment experiences in a sustainable value chain. If anyone understands what is necessary to have these two worlds join, it is Patrick Witkowski from ChemSec. Patrick, can you outline the ChemSec's investor initiative on hazardous chemicals that has gained so much interest and explain why it's really relevant for both investors and the chemical industry? Yeah, sure. So, um, ChemSec, we're a Swedish-based NGO and uh, we work to um, reduce the production and use of uh, hazardous chemicals. And um, since a number of years back, we've had this uh, ranking uh, of the world's largest uh, pub publicly traded chemical companies uh, called ChemScore where we basically rank uh, these companies based on their um, chemicals management and uh, toxic footprint. And um, since last year, so um, 2023, uh, we've also coordinated uh, the Investor Initiative on Hazardous Chemicals. So this is a, uh, an investor network uh, now gathering more than 60 large institutional investors with um, 12 trillion dollars of assets under management or advice. And uh, this network um, works to reduce the financial risks linked to um, hazardous uh, chemicals. So um, they are um, you know, split up into different engagement teams that are directly engaged with um, a number of these companies that we rank in ChemScore, where they have dialogues with them, uh, which are ongoing um, about these topics. And uh, the uh, initiative basically has three key asks. So the first is for the companies to increase their transparency. Um, the second is to uh, publish a time-bound phase-out plan of products that are or contain hazardous chemicals. And the third is to uh, develop safer alternatives. I cannot wait to have investors, industry and regulators in one room sharing their ideas on assessing chemical risks and sharing building blocks for a resilient, sustainable investment. Patrick, what is needed to create the desired changes in the chemical industry? Well, again, I mean, regulation uh, is key, um, but of course you need pressure from other stakeholders as well. You need pressure from investors, you need pressure from uh, downstream users. They need to make it clear to the chemical manufacturers that they want safer alternatives. Um, and we also need, uh, you know, a few, a few frontrunner companies, uh, manufacturers that really take the lead and uh, see the business opportunities and the first mover advantages in uh, developing the safer alternatives uh, of the future. Thank you for your contribution, Patrick. I'm already looking forward to more inspiring contributions of ChemSec and other stakeholders at ChemCon Asia 2024 in June in Bangkok. The longer videos with Patrick, Tara, Jeff, Wim and Peter are as always available on our YouTube channel. For now, thank you for watching and looking forward to seeing you in June in Bangkok.